Hey guys, welcome back to another Unreal Engine 4 tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to open up a door using a timeline and have it close and lock behind you. So this is another request which would be good for like a horror game. So you walk through a door, it shuts behind you and locks, meaning you then can't leave through the door again. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So what we're going to do first is create a blueprint actor for this. So to do that, we're going to right click, go to blueprint class, select actor. I'm just going to call this door 1 BP. You can call this whatever you like. That's how I'm going to name it. And open that up straight away. And the first thing we're going to do is add component up on the top left here and add a static mesh. And this static mesh is going to be our door. So once you've added that, you can name this whatever you like. So I'm just going to name it door and then just add the static mesh in there. So I'm going to be using the one in the start content like this. So we have our door here. You can scale this however you like, but this is how I'm going to have it. So we compile that and then we're going to make a box collision as well. So like this. And we'll make two. So we'll do this one first. So this box collision is where you're going to be to open the door. So what we want to do is put this in front of the door and just scale this up to how big we want it to be. So like I say, this is the place you're going to be in to be able to open the door. So we want this only on the front side. And then we'll get another one. We can make it the same size. So we'll duplicate that like so. But then just move it onto the back of the door like this. And this is the one that you're going to leave to then have the door close. So I'm just going to name these ones. So this is open collision, as that makes the most sense to me. You name these whatever you like, so it could be front and back, but for me open and close makes the most sense to me. So we'll do that, and then so we know what it is in the actual game as well. When we place it down, we're going to add an arrow. So again, add component and add an arrow, like so. And we want this arrow to be on the front of the door. So there works, and we'll make sure it's facing this way again the front. And again like I say you won't be able to see this when you're playing the game only when you're testing it out. So I'll show you what this does so when we place it in you can see that this is going to be the front of the door as that's where the arrow is pointing. So I might as well just put this in place now and like I say the door the arrow sorry is just a really good helpful trick so you can see what you're putting and where you're placing it and again you won't see it when we play the game which I'll show you there is just the door. So that works now let's go back into the blueprint and what we'll do is just go straight to the event graph now. We're going to delete these bottom two here so we begin overlap and event tick. We'll come off event begin play and straight away we're just going to enable input like this with the player controller being get player controller like so. That simple. And I'm just going to comment this and call it enable input as I like to just keep things nice and organized. Compile this and then what we're going to do next is create an interact action mapping. So we can minimize this, go to edit, project settings, and when this is loaded, we'll go straight down to input. So input down here, hit the plus on the action mappings, and I'm going to name this one interact. This can be whatever you like. It's obviously just going to be your interact key, which I have set to E like so. Ah, so it did it for me because I already did it in a previous tutorial. But yeah, what you're going to do is make that interact and then you're just going to hit the plus here to add an action mapping and change this to be whatever you like. So I have it on E. So again, this is really good for if you want to add multiple buttons or different buttons across different consoles, different platforms, stuff like that. Or if you want to set up action binding so the player can change the keys and stuff like that. But for the moment, we'll just get into this. So now we'll go back to the blueprint, right click and search for interact or whatever you have just named it. Get interact. We'll come off of pressed and go straight into a gate and that should go into enter and i'll explain what the gate does in a minute so what we're going to do is go on the open collision box collision up here right click this add event add on begin overlap like so and then we'll do the same but this time we get end overlap so again open collision add event end overlap and this is because we want to be able to open the door when we're in this collision so off other actor of these we're going to cast to our character and this is basically the character which you want to be able to overlap so if your character is in this collision you can open the door so for me that's the third person character so cast a third person character this is just whatever you named it so it could be first person or anything like that and out of this, we're going to go straight into the open of the again overlap. And we'll do the same of end overlap. So cast to third person character. And then this one, we're going to plug into close. So what this does is if we are in the box collision, it's going to open the gate, meaning that if we press E, we can go through it. But then if we leave the box collision, it's going to close the gate, meaning if we press E, we can't go through it. And when we go through the gate, it's going to fire off the code that we put in down here. So again, I'm now just going to comment this and call this interact, like so. And then what we're going to do is come out with the exit of this and get an add timeline. So add timeline, like so. I'm just going to call this door open, like that. And this wants to actually go into play from start instead of just play as we obviously want to play it from the start of the animation. And then we'll double click on this to open it. And this is where we're going to actually create the kind of animation for opening the door. So if we hit the plus add flow track up here in the very top left, call this again door open or anything you like. So we now have that. 
what we're going to do is set the length to the amount of time we want it to take to open the door. So the length of the door opening animation. So I want mine to last, let's say, three seconds. So I'll put length three up there. I'm just going to right click anywhere on the graph, add key to curve float like this. Make sure it's still selected. Up at the top here, we've got time and value. I'm going to set the time to zero. So it's the very start of the graph and the value also to zero. And this means that it's at the very start and the door is closed because the time zero, the value is zero. And we're going to right click again, again, anywhere, add key. This one, the time is going to be at the very end of our graph. So mine is three seconds long. So the time is three. The value, again, this is at the end. So the value is going to be set to one like so. And to see this, we can press these two buttons here, zoom to fit horizontal, zoom to fit vertical, meaning that we can now see our graph it goes from closed to open in a perfect line like this. Now we can hit compile and we can just close this. So close that little there, that tab there to go back to the event graph. And then what we're going to do is create two different variables. So over down here at the plus variable, we're going to hit plus variable there. This one's going to be called door close angle like this. Make sure that this is a float up here. And then we're going to get another one called door open angle. And again, make sure that's a float. And if we hit compile, we can change these angles here, change the values. So obviously door close is going to be zero. Door open, we want to set this to what we want it to be. So I want it to open like this. So that's going to be 110, I want it to be. You can see that everything's moving like that, and that's because it's all parented under the door. So if you just drag and drop that onto the door, they will no longer be parented, meaning we can just move the door by itself. And if I hit the door, there we go. So like I say, mess about with that how you want. I want it to be 110 degrees, change it to whatever you want it to be. 110 like that will work for me. And then what we're gonna do is just put both of these in. So drag and drop them down here, and get just underneath the timeline here. Get, we want closed above the open like so. And then we're gonna drag off of closed, drag off of it and get a lerp. So it goes between two different values. So value A and value B and the alpha is the value which is in between them. So think of it like a timeline. A is the start of it. B is the end of it, the alpha is where you are in between those two values. And to determine where we are between those two values, we're going to be using the door open float from our timeline which we just made. And obviously drag door open into B like so. And then how we actually do this to set the door, all we want to do is drag a reference to our door start the mesh up here, so drag drop that in there. Just drag off of this and then set relative rotation, get this one here, plug that into the update of the timeline there and then right click the new rotation split structure pin and get the return value from the lerp into the new rotation of the z like so as we want to be rotating it on the z axes so this should now work to open it as we've got the timeline go into our lerp with the correct angles and set the relative rotation so if we just comment over this again so select it and press c i'm going to call this door open now we just need to set it up to actually close the door as well so to do that what we're going to do is select the close collision box collision up here right click add event add on component end overlap like so this time we only want the end this is simply just going to come in come off of this and we're going to add timeline again so add timeline like this this one we're going to call door close and it's just going to be the opposite of the door open one so again double click that to open it up add new float track call this one door close and again this is just the complete opposite so we can keep it the same length or even faster if you want so i'm going to have it shut completely closed so like someone slammed it so i'm just going to set it to one second this time i'm going to right click add key and instead of going from the closed to open i'm going to open to closed so the time is going to be zero again but the value this time is going to be one so we're starting the value at one then right click add key time being one or at the end value being zero if i fit this to both of those we can see that this time it's now going down instead of up so if we hit compile and we can close that again to go back to the event graph i'm going to do the exact same thing we did up here so we can actually just copy and paste this down here plug that into there on the update but this time we want these the other way around so instead of door close and then door open it's going to be door open in a door close in b like so but the alpha is again coming out of the timeline like that and if we just select this hit c to comment it and call this door close so what we want to do to change this actually is again put this into play from start instead of just play and then also these do want to be the other way around so it is door close on top of door open like this so how it was originally so put this back in there like that hit compile minimize this hit play to test it you can see that if we press e over here nothing happens 
we go into the box collision and press E, it does that. So it plays the close and then opens, which I'm not sure why, but I'll fix that in a minute. But then as you see, we walk through, it then closes behind you. You might want to make that quicker, it depends on you, but obviously that's the functionality of it. And if we're on this side, we can't press E to open it again. We just can't get through back through. So we'll see why this doesn't work. So what we may as well do is just set a variable to see if it's open or closed. So if we hit plus variable there, call this one opened question mark or something like that make this one a boolean and keep it by default to be false like this what we're going to do is come out of the finished value here for the first timeline of door open come out of finished and then drag it on there to set it and we're going to set this to true so once it's played the open one it will be true now if we come back down here what we're going to do is just before this we can get a branch so hold down b and left click to get a branch with the condition of being opened so if the door's open or not and we're going to come off of true and go into play from start because obviously we only want to close this if the door is open or not now this should work so now if we again compile minimize hit play to test go over here we press e it now just opens the door and then if we walk out of it it closes it so that fixed the problem and it now works perfectly. So I think that'll be it for this video. We've done everything we wanted to do. We set it up so we're over here, nothing happens, we're pressing E, nothing happens. We walk into this box collision. If we press E, the door will open. And if we walk through it, the door then closes behind us and we can't get back through. We can't unlock it again. So we can't open the door. It is now locked behind us. And obviously if you're in like a haunted house or something in a horror game, you're now trapped inside that building. So I'll show you this again, you go over here, press E, it opens the door, and then if you walk through it, it slams shut behind you. So thanks so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I hope you found it helpful, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe down below. So thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one.